Hey, it's Dougie from Valto. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly the difference between Power Apps and Power Automate. Now, before we dive into looking at some real examples of both Power Apps and Power Automate, I want to explain at a high level what the two different products are and what they're used for. So Power Apps is essentially where you build your user interface. It's essentially a set of forms which can collect information. It doesn't actually store that information for you. And this is something that which is commonly misunderstood about Power Apps. So you will need to have a back end to store the data, whether that be a SharePoint list, a, a Dataverse table, SQL table, or even an Excel spreadsheet can store data. Now, essentially what we're then doing is using Power Apps as a way of interfacing with the user. It could be through a mobile phone, it could be through a tablet, or it could be through a desktop computer. But essentially, it's the user interface that's interacting and collecting information. You could also use it for a whole different set of purposes, um, like self-help guides, tutorials, things like that, which we're going to take a look at in this video. Now, Power Automate is essentially the sidekick of Power Apps. And what I mean by that is, think of these two as like Batman and Robin. They work really well together. Power Automate is essentially a tool that will allow you to build out workflows, whether it be approval notifications, um, pushing things uh, into applications, calculating things, um, general automation of tasks is what Power Automate does. Now, Power Apps and Power Automate work side by side together because if you think about it, Power Apps is a way of submitting the data, getting into a form, and then storing into a database, and then Power Automate picks up on that and then takes over and does the automation, whether it be an approval process, notifications, or whatever it is from there. So now we understand a bit more about these different products, let's dive in and take a bit of a look at Power Apps to start with. So this is Power Apps. Now, this is actually not a Power App running in full kind of mode. It's actually in edit mode through the designer. But before we look at that, I'm just going to click on play and I'm going to play this app to show you what it is. Now, to give you a bit of context of what this app is, it's essentially a self-help guide for an organization to use internally to give to their staff to work out whether or not um, that a piece of content they want to use is going to infringe on copyright law. Now, this organization was a very large enterprise organization and they use a lot of different scientific materials and they wanted to make sure that their staff weren't going to have any copyright issues. The copyright team internally had a lot of inbound requests and they were often answering the same questions repeatedly. So instead, what they wanted um, us to do was to build them a power app that their employees could use as a self-help guide. Basically, like if you remember those books when you were a kid, which you could choose your own ending dependent on um, which kind of avenue you went down. Um, so if you want to cross a bridge, go to page nine. If you want to climb the mountain, go to page 20, something like that. It's a very similar concept. So a user would come onto this app, they'd click on start, and then it'd ask them a set of questions, say how to use content from scientific publications. Is it So it's a self-help guide that I'm using. Am I going to be using it internally or externally? I'm going to be using it externally. Um, why are you reading the article? The article has been requested. Um, is it possible to link to it? And then I can say yes. So great. Now it's telling me I do not need to worry about copyright because under this particular scenario, I'm not going to be infringing on any laws or issues or anything like that. So it's given me a green pass. However, depending on which answers I had chosen, it could have given me a caution, say maybe actually give the copyright team a call to work this out further together or complete outright, no, do not do this, completely stop. You are definitely going to infringe on copyright law and it would just stop it right there and then. So for both of those kind of th avenues, there's three avenues, either yes, continue, or um, no, do not do it. So those have completely cut out the need of, co of contacting the copyright team altogether because the users got their answer. Whereas the other option is caution, maybe give us a call. So using an app like this, I think they reduced down their kind of inbound kind of um, contact by about 60% because a lot of people could get the answers they needed to without having to go to the copyright team. 
Now, Power Apps itself, as I say, really kind of like a simple kind of interface. Um, it's very much like Power uh, PowerPoint, in fact, actually, that you can see on the left-hand side, all those screens that are running this application are almost like slides in here. And because Power Apps is low code, meaning that you don't need to know JavaScript or uh, .NET or any other type of programming or developer languages you might have heard of, um, it's essentially run by very similar formulas that run Excel documents. And all this application is doing is using the on select formula to navigate to a different page. And we're just moving around the different pages. We could get it to collect data if we wanted to. So say, for example, if we ran into the page, which was a caution to say, contact our copyright team, if you've got these issues, you could have a contact button to click on it, and it could automatically raise a ticket or log something into a database um, and use, say, Power Automate to go and send an email or a team's message to the copyright team say, um, there's a potential issue here that needs to be followed up with. So that's essentially how Power Apps works. So let's look at Power Automate now. So Power Automate, Power Automate is essentially where you can build out your workflows. Now, essentially, like with anything in life, it has a start, a middle, and an end. The start is what we call a trigger. So something can trigger it. So this might be, say, for example, uh, an email is received or a document is deleted. Or in this example template I'm using, it's where a Microsoft form has been submitted. Uh, obviously, we can then have our parameters of which form it is that's being submitted. And then we can do things like get the full details of the form. And in this template, we're then creating a task inside of Microsoft Planner to basically action that task. We can then put in a update to task details. So once it's, say, for example, if we update it and the task is complete, we could send an email back to the original person who started uh, the form submission and say, this task is completed. So say, for example, the form might be um, a particular request. That request is then put into a planner. Once the task in planner is completed, it can then go back and send an email to um, the original person to say that this task is then complete. But this is just a high-level example of what Power Automate can do. It's just worth mentioning that to see that you can actually have um, a start, so that's our triggering point, actions, and also quite importantly, conditions as well. So depending on what something's happened, it can then go down a certain avenue. So say for example, this might be a approval process. So if it's been approved, it goes down the approval route, sends an email say this has been approved, marks off and starts a certain automation uh, routine. Whereas if it's rejected, it goes sends back an email and says, sorry, this has been rejected for whatever reasons, and then the workflow then ends. So you can have that kind of like point where it's then got this pathways dependent on which options are then being choose. So I hope that gives you a good understanding of what Power Apps and Power Automate can do and how they work together to build out business applications. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like and leave any comments or questions that you have below. If you need any help with Power Apps, we do offer consultancy here at Valto. All you need to do is follow the link below um, to our website. There's a contact form there. Get in touch and one of our Power Apps specialists will book in a free consultation with you to discuss your requirements. Thank you and look out for future Valto videos.